These are notes to follow the burning ethanol demonstration we did on, in class and also to kind of tie in all of the concepts we've learned in this unit. So earlier we did zooming into a cloud, today we're going to look at zooming into a flame. So here we've got a flame um, at the atomic molecular scale. And one thing I do want to point out about this flame is that while this says that this is the bottom of the flame and that this is the top of the flame, that the flame itself is energy. Okay, the flame itself is not made of atoms. What this picture is supposed to be showing is these are the molecules going into the flame to, to in a sense, make the flame. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But these are the reactants. So these are the things that are reacting that then one of the results is this flame. Okay? And then the same here, the top of the flame. The flame as itself, again, is energy, but these are the products coming out of this reaction. Um, and, and so this is what's called a combustion reaction, and we'll look at that later. But one of the products of a combustion reaction is going to be light and heat, so, or energy. All combustion reactions are exothermic because they all produce light and heat. And in fact, when you get to chemistry, you'll learn sometimes you even like write those in as products, even though it's not made. Actually, we'll even study that later this year when we start talking about um, photosynthesis and cellular respiration. We'll put energy in as a reactant or a product. We understand it's not made of molecules, but it's still something that we're either getting out of the reaction or that needs to be input into the reaction overall. And that determines whether the reaction, again, is exo or endothermic. Um, one thing I would like to say is that this curriculum comes from, uh, not this curriculum, but this PowerPoint I modified from uh, a carbon time PowerPoint. And for whatever reason, they've switched the colors of oxygen and nitrogen. So normally nitrogen is blue and oxygen is red. Carbon is always black, hydrogen is always white. Um, but just keep that in mind, it, it's going to contradict the colors that I showed you earlier and the colors that we'll use in the modeling kits in class. So what I would encourage you to do is simply pause the video for a few minutes and examine the flame, um, kind of the reactant side of the flame and then the product side of the flame, meaning what's going into this reaction, what's coming out of this reaction, and just look for differences, okay? So go ahead and pause it, look for differences, what do you notice? All right, so one of the things that I think is most obvious is if we look at the ethanol, uh, here are a bunch of ethanol, here are a bunch of ethanol, here's some ethanol, here's an ethanol, there's an ethanol, and that's all in the reactant side, and there's still a few ethanol in the product side. There's this one here, here, and there, maybe two there even, um, hard to tell, but that means that ethanol is a reactant in this reaction. And that makes sense, right? We're burning ethanol. We have ethanol there at the beginning. That's really clear. Um, so then what are some other differences? Uh, one thing we might notice is that we've got all of this. So there, there, I kind of put little dots on it. All of this oxygen gas here at the beginning, okay? And again, there's some oxygen gas at the end. There's one here and here. I mean, we're not oxygen poor here, or uh, maybe we're oxygen poor, we're not oxygen broke. There is some oxygen, um, but again, much less, just like the ethanol. And so from that, we can determine that oxygen is also a reactant. Um, let's look at the carbon dioxide. Here's some carbon dioxide. Mm, not seeing much more, but then over here we've got carbon dioxide here and here um, and there and there. So four times as much carbon dioxide in the products, leading us to believe that carbon dioxide would be a product. And this shouldn't be striking to anyone. I mean, we burned the ethanol in class, so we know it's a reactant. We had the BTB right there, it turned yellow, so we know carbon dioxide's got to be a product. And then the other one is, if you notice, there's all these water molecules all over the product side, okay? And again, there are a few water molecules over here, 
but there are many more over on this side. And again, this is something we should know, right? Because we saw that water vapor form. And then the nitrogen, well, that's kind of a crazy P. The nitrogen, um, there's definitely more nitrogen in this picture, but it's not a significant amount more. Um, the nitrogen is just there. It's not actually part of the reaction. Um, whoever made this view just, I think, got a little overexcited about their nitrogen. Um, but the nitrogen isn't doing much. It's, it's not reacting. It just happens to be there. It's watching the reaction go by. All right, so let's look at um, this kind of, and, and they say that the hidden chemical change when ethanol burns. So here we've got ethanol burning, and here we've got our reactants. We've got our ethanol here, and we've got our oxygen here. Okay, and let's see what, what's actually happening. Okay, so we've got the ethanol and oxygen going into the flame, or, and really they're creating the flame. I mean, this is an exothermic reaction. So it's this reaction that is creating a ton of heat and light, um, it's so much so that we see flames. And then as those molecules recombine, they recombine into carbon dioxide and water. And so you can kind of see that happening. And, and then in a few minutes, we'll talk about exactly what that combustion reaction is. All right, so let's look at what is happening in general um, when ethanol burns, okay? So here again, our reactants, here's our ethanol, and here's our oxygen, and don't worry about the fact that some of these are yellow and some are gray. Um, <clears throat> that's a carbon time thing, and I'm actually not crazy about why they do that, because it's not completely accurate, so we're just gonna ignore it. But it's a nice picture. And then we know it's a chemical change, and we know that we get carbon dioxide, water, and heat and light energy. Okay? And so in this chemical change, what we have are these kind of rearranging themselves. Okay? Um, and so they all go into the reaction, and in there the bonds break apart, they reform, and when they reform, we get out more energy than it took to break them apart. So that's an exothermic reaction, right? More energy uh, was released when the water and carbon dioxide formed than we needed to break the oxygen and ethanol apart. And so that is a really key, these are two key um, characteristics of exothermic reactions. One is that it's a reaction in which oxygen is one of the reactants. And the second is, it's exothermic. Okay, that's why we get the heat and light energy out. Um, but it's so exothermic that we get the light. So for example, we saw an exothermic um, change in class with the hot snaps. It's not a reaction because it wasn't a chemical change, but we didn't get any light out of that. It wasn't so much energy that it was glowing. Okay, there's a lot of reactions where you're gonna see the temperature go up, you're gonna feel that it gets warmer, kind of the opposite of the baking soda and stuff, but it's not gonna glow, there's not gonna be light. So a combustion reaction is where it's a reaction that takes place in the presence of oxygen and it's so exothermic that you not only get heat, but you get light as well. So please feel free to add any questions to the question sec or the comment section, or you can ask them in class. Have a good night.